I just performed half of this video to a camera that wasn't even running. There are names you just can't ignore when you do these countdowns. You have to talk about Bela Lugosi and Frank Langella if you're going to talk about Dracula. Everyone will complain if you don't mention George C. Scott in your countdown of Scrooges. These actors are just too indelibly linked with those roles. And if anybody has reached that point with Captain America, it's probably the subject of today's video and the proud owner of America's ass, Chris Evans. So while you're here for the video you knew had to be included in the countdown, make sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell to hear about the rest of the countdown as it gets released. Christopher Robert Evans was born in Boston, Massachusetts in June of 1981, making him just one year younger than me. Huh. I have really got to get moving on that whole acting career thing if I still want to have one. Evans grew up in the town of Sudbury as part of an entertainment family. His mother, Lisa, was the artistic director of the Concord Youth Theater, and his younger brother, Scott, has also appeared on One Life to Live and Grace and Frankie. In addition to his acting, Evans has become notable for his political commentary, which also happens to run in his family. He is the nephew of Mike Capuano, the Democrat from Massachusetts 8th Congressional District from 1999 to 2019. Chris Evans was a theater nerd from a very early age. He grew up loving stage musicals and attending acting camps in the summers, as well as performing with his brother and two sisters for relatives every Christmas. Performing was so ingrained into his childhood that Evans would tell Alex Papadamus for The Hollywood Reporter that the stage always felt like home. Before he had even graduated high school, Evans had already started auditioning for Broadway shows and taking classes at the Lee Strasberg Institute. But while acting had always been a part of his life, Evans would later tell The Hollywood Reporter that his true dream career as a child was animation saying he used to spend all day drawing in his room and dreaming of working as an animator at Disney Studios. His professional acting career started early with a role in the educational short Biodiversity, Wild About Life, which he filmed at the age of 16. In 1999, he would model for an update of the classic board game Mystery Date as Tyler, one of the mystery dates that players would hopefully be able to land. Specifically, he was the beach date. I've never played the game, is that good? In 2000, Evans made the move across the country to L.A. He would make his television debut in The Newcomers in the same year, and also landed a lead role in Opposite Sex for Fox, which only lasted about eight episodes before being cancelled. In the early years of his career, critics were less than kind to Evans when they took notice of him at all. He was often singled out for criticism as uncharismatic or even bland. It wasn't until 2005 that critics would suddenly decide Evans had charisma to spare, as he appeared in Fantastic Four, playing Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Suddenly, Evans was getting attention from critics who praised his charismatic breakout performance, even as the movie and its sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, underperformed at the box office. The role kept Evans in sight and more work followed as he appeared in Danny Boyle's Sunshine, 
earning praise from Roger Ebert, and appeared on screen with Scarlett Johansson for the first time as her love interest in 2007's The Nanny Diaries. Evans would return to superheroism with Push, co-starring with Dakota Fanning and Camilla Bell, and performing in all of his own fight scenes instead of giving the job to a stunt double. Comic adaptations in general continued to play a large part in his career, as he would go on to appear in The Losers, and finally wound up as the best of Ramona's evil exes in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. He's good, right? Sometimes I let him do the wide shots, when I feel like getting Blaze back in my Winnie. Well, the second best. This ex-boyfriend's thing is messing with my head. Exes. Why do you keep saying <laughs> I stan Roxy Richter, don't at me. Also, this movie is like a yearbook of future film superheroes. For instance, this is Mae Whitman, who later voiced animated versions of Batgirl and Wonder Girl. The cast also features once Superman and future Captain Adam, Brandon Ruth as Todd Ingram, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who would go on to be the Huntress in Birds of Prey, and Aubrey Plaza, who would later play Lenny Busker in Legion. Actors who auditioned but didn't make the cut also included Robert Pattinson, who would later be Batman, and Sebastian Stan, who would later play the Winter Soldier to Evans's Captain America. And of course, there's no way I can forget... Brie Larson as Envy Adams, a.k.a. the platonic ideal of a rock star, who would later go on to play Captain Marvel. In 2010, Evans was offered a multi-picture deal to play Captain America for Marvel Studios. As it turns out, the timing was terrible. Just before the offer came in, Evans had started suffering from a series of what he called little panic attacks that became worse every time he had to do publicity for a movie he was appearing in, and he had even started questioning whether he wanted to be an actor anymore. Saying that he was starting to take his little panic attacks as a sign that, just maybe, he should have gone after his childhood dream of animation instead, because then he would be working in the studio instead of answering questions on camera. So when Marvel came knocking, Evans passed on the deal. Twice. The first time he turned down a nine-picture deal, and the second time he turned down a six-picture deal, one that had been intended to give him more flexibility. It took a visit to the Marvel offices, a conversation with an old acting coach, and a phone call from Robert Downey Jr. to convince Evans to take the offer, and immediately after... Evans began speaking with a therapist, a decision that Evans says has saved his life and sanity. And it's not just Evans who has commented on the difference therapy has made. His Marvel co-star, Robert Downey, has said that he has seen the effect of therapy on Evans over the years they have spent together on set, describing him as a man who has gone from having serious social anxiety to someone who has grown more and more comfortable in their own skin. Of course, Captain America the First Avenger was a critical and commercial success, as was his next appearance as the Captain in The Avengers. Almost instantly, Evans became not only the face of Captain America, but the face of the entire Marvel film franchise. While appearing regularly in Marvel movies, Evans would also turn in performances in The Iceman and Bong Joon-ho's Snowpiercer, as well as making his own directorial debut 
with 2014's Before We Go. He returned to the stage in 2018, finally debuting on Broadway in Lobby Hero at the Helen Hayes Theater, where he earned rave reviews and a nomination for a Drama League Award. In 2019, he wrapped up nine years of working on Marvel projects with his appearance in Avengers Endgame, which effectively brought Evans' run as the captain to a close. A student of Buddhism, Evans started speaking out publicly about his political beliefs in 2012 with a statement supporting gay marriage. He has endorsed Democratic candidates for office, including Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. And in July of 2020, he launched the website A Starting Point, which publishes interviews with American elected officials. And he has worked as a fundraiser for Christopher's Haven, Feeding America, Meals on Wheels, World Central Kitchen, and No Kid Hungry. I can do this all day. Oh, of course you can, of course. But unfortunately, I am on a tight schedule. Today, Marvel Studios is an amazing success story, building a successful independent studio that ultimately wound up purchased by Disney. But it almost didn't happen. As late as 2005, Marvel was shopping Captain America to other film studios. They had approached Artisan Entertainment, for instance, to finance the film, but the deal had fallen apart after Captain America's co-creator Joe Simon sued Marvel, claiming ownership of the character's copyrights. The suit was eventually settled, netting Simon a deal in which he receives a royalty on merchandising and media deals involving Captain America, making him one of the few Golden Age comics creators to receive a royalty of any kind on a character he created originally as a work for hire. When the dust settled from the suit, Marvel once again hit the streets to find a company that wanted to license Cap. And they were actually in the middle of negotiations with none other than Warner Brothers when they were approached by theater producer David Maisel, who had also worked with Creative Artists Agency, been the president of live theater company Livent, and who, at the time, was working for Endeavor Talent Agency as their corporate strategic lead. Maisel made a relatively simple pitch to Marvel's CEOs Avi Arad and Isaac Perlmutter. Instead of licensing out their characters to other studios, why not produce their own movies? Doing so would not only mean that Marvel could have creative control, but it also would enable them to run the film side of things the way they ran their comics. That is, character crossovers, team titles, and larger story arcs told across multiple titles. The idea was intriguing, and Marvel ended their discussions with other studios. Perlmutter hired Maisel as the new studio's CEO, and as his first act, Maisel secured $525 million in investment from Merrill Lynch, earmarked for the production of 10 films, one of which was to be Captain America. Avi Arad initially wanted Captain America to be the first of Marvel's movies, hoping to release the film in 2008. However, after hearing a pitch from Jon Favreau, who was initially interested in Captain America, they made the decision to move ahead with Iron Man. Iron Man turned into a box office phenomenon, and the post credit scene in which Samuel L. Jackson appears as Nick Fury set off a wave of speculation as to how this movie would join together with other movies similar to what Marvel had been doing for years. A creative team was assembled to work on Captain America, including director Joe Johnston. 
Originally, the film was to spend half of its runtime in World War II, and the second half would tell the story of Captain America waking up in a world he didn't recognize. But in 2008, Kevin Feige told Entertainment Weekly that, following the election of Barack Obama, the idea of change and hope has permeated the country regardless of politics, adding, things are being adjusted. Throughout 2009, Marvel produced a steady dribble of movie news to the public. They mentioned that the film might feature the Invaders, the original World War II-era team that Captain America had been a part of. But ultimately, they shifted to featuring the Howling Commandos. Casting rumors circulated. Sebastian Stan was going to be Captain America. No, wait, it was Ryan Phillippe. No, now it's John Krasinski. At one point, even Dwayne The Rock Johnson's name was floated as a possibility. But in March of 2010, it was announced that Chris Evans had signed for the film. Samuel L. Jackson would be appearing as Nick Fury and, at the time, beloved screenwriter-director Joss Whedon was giving the screenplay a final polish in anticipation of working on The Avengers. Filming began in June of 2010 in London. Most of the filming would take place in the UK, and Marvel used Captain America to briefly test out the possibility of shooting the films in native 3D. However, director Joe Johnston decided against it, declaring the system to be too bulky and too difficult to calibrate. On his say, Marvel decided that it would, instead, shoot in 2D and later digitally convert to 3D. And somewhere, James Cameron shed a single tear. In post-production, Marvel contracted with 13 different companies to handle the film's more than 1,600 special effects shots, including digitally manipulating Hugo Weaving's face to thin the appearance of the latex mask that he wore as the Red Skull. July 19, 2011 was the official premiere of Captain America at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood, and on the 21st, the movie was screened at San Diego Comic-Con International. It hit wide release on July 22nd and earned $4 million in midnight showings on its debut, outstripping all of the other superhero films of the year, and there were a lot in that year. It would go on to earn $176.7 million in North America and $193.9 million globally, for a total box office of $370.6 million, making it at the time the third highest grossing World War II film ever released, just behind Saving Private Ryan and Pearl Harbor. Critics loved the film, and it sits at a respectable 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. If there were any complaints from the critics, it was just that they wanted more. But it sealed Marvel's success and laid the foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe as audiences know it today. As I mentioned earlier, Evans' appearance in 2019's Avengers Endgame is the end of his story arc for Captain America, at least for now. Although it was James Bond who taught us to never say never again. However, at this point, Evans has indicated he has little interest in returning to the role, but he would like another crack at playing Johnny Storm, if Marvel has any interest in it, because he feels the role never really got the shot that it deserved. But that doesn't mean the Marvel Universe is without a captain. As in the comics, the Falcon has stepped up to be Captain America in Rogers' place. That would be Anthony Mackie, born in September of 1978 in New Orleans, Louisiana, to parents Martha and Willie Mackie Sr. As of now, he has only been Captain America briefly in Disney Plus's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but Marvel has confirmed 
that Mackie will be starring in the fourth Captain America film. For now, let's put a pin in that because this video is very long as it is, but suffice it to say, Anthony Mackie is hashtag my captain. Thanks for checking out this video. Drop into the comments and let me know what you think of Chris Evans's Captain America. Personally, I think it would be impossible for America to ask for a nicer ass to represent it. But let me know what you think, and while you're there, click like and subscribe if you haven't already, ring the bell so you're notified of future videos, and if you're just joining us with this video, make sure you circle back and check the earlier episodes. A link to that playlist should be popping up right about now. Until next time, watch like it means something. Thank you.